Hi, this is Katie Jarvis with Managing the Mess. In this video, we're gonna be talking all about printmaking. I'm gonna share how I set this activity up for students using centers. I'm gonna tell you what I teach students when we're doing printmaking lessons. And I feel like this is gonna be helpful if you're starting out, because this is something as a new teacher, I just could not envision how was I gonna get these students to do this independently with all the different steps. If you've been teaching for a while, hopefully you can pick up some tips and tricks how to simplify this activity and make it more enjoyable for students. I'll also touch on how to clean up this messy activity. I'm gonna start off with the tools that I use for printmaking. So for the younger grades, I use this brand Innovart um, and it's Presto Foam printing plates. I would use smaller sizes for most of my grade levels. This is the size um, that I use for the fourth graders for their project, but this works with pen. You draw into the styrofoam, pushing it down to create your stamp. For my sixth graders, which is the top grade um, that I teach, we use linoleum printing plates. So it's a little bit like a material like uh, an eraser. It's called Easy Cut Linoleum E and then Z Cut with a K, uh, I believe, uh, linoleum. And students use carving tools to carve into that linoleum. So there are Lina zips, which is the one that looks a little bit like this hook that students carve and pull towards them themselves. And there's Lina cut, which you are cutting away from yourself. And this takes off some of that linoleum so that students are able to make prints that look like this. And I have students print onto different colors of construction paper, depending upon the project. For sixth grade, I do let them choose what color they're going to use. When we're printing, we're using Speedball ink. And I like to buy the really big uh, five ounce uh, bottles of ink so that it lasts us a long time. When you get to the bottom, it kind of is a little bit like toothpaste where it's hard to get it out, especially for the kids. I use rollers for students to put the ink onto the stamp. We do use um, these Speedball Barons, or my students call them rubbing tools, to rub the back of the stamp and get the ink off of the stamp onto the paper. I use foam uh, trays. Usually I prefer them to be um, bigger than this, but this is all we could find this year. Uh, but this is where we put the ink so the students can roll the ink onto that. I would cut down the construction paper, um, like I said, for the prints before the students would come in. And I would also copy um, where I wanted the stamp to go. So I put this on the copy machine. This outside line would be the paper that the students are going to print on. And the inside line would be the shape of the stamp that the students are using. So right now I'm going to be setting up for my third graders to do printmaking. And this is the size of their stamp. So the stamp would go right there facing up to the ceiling. And then the paper would go on top. What you're about to see me do is set up my room in centers for these printmaking stations. My two front tables, I'm going to be setting up with the foam trays, the ink and the rollers, and these are going to be the printing stations. My third graders are doing ancient Egyptians and we're going to do one table silver and one table gold. If students want to switch from one table to the other, they'll simply go to the sink and wash their stamp off. In the back two tables, that's going to be our printing tables. So that's where I'm going to put that registration paper that they're lining up their stamp on. I'm going to put paper for printing, and I'm also going to be putting pencils for them to sign their name. I am setting up my stations with a little bit of ink already on the tray to get the students started, but I will leave these tubes here so that students can refill them as needed. I explain this to students that they should be using as much ink as they would um, toothpaste. They should not be using the amount of ink that they would use if this was ketchup. So toothpaste is the good indicator about how much they will need. If students use too much ink, it's gonna go into the hole of their stamp and their print is not going to come out the way that they like it. They'll actually need to wash their stamp off. So it's a lot of work if they use too much ink and they quickly uh, realize this and catch on to that um, if they do make that mistake. I like to teach students about printmaking using pre-recorded demos so that they can see my hands up close doing the different skills that are going to happen at each of my centers. 
at the tables here in the front, I'm teaching students that they're gonna be using the rollers and they're gonna be thinly rolling out the ink. They want the ink to be very, very thin and very even. And we're using that speedball ink. They put their stamps down right on to the table and then they roll the ink right on top of the stamp. And I don't care because tables are covered if ink gets onto the table. I show them how to very carefully hold the edges of the stamp and pick it up once the ink is on the stamp and move it to my back tables. At the back table, students usually stand up and they will get one of these papers and set it down on the table. Their stamp will go on here facing up. So their stamps always looking up at the ceiling. We're never turning them upside down. I think that helps to avoid some of the confusion with students. And I explain this to them that it's like a sandwich. So we've got the registration paper here on the bottom. That's the piece of bread. Their stamp is going to be the meat. And then they're going to choose a piece of construction paper and line that up with the rectangle that you see on the paper and that's gonna be the top bread. Students would keep this flat on the table, holding one hand down so that this does not wiggle, and then the other hand is rubbing with a rubbing tool. They do need to rub this for about a minute. They're gonna rub all the corners and the centers. And I remind students that this is called a barren or a rubbing tool. So if they hear people banging or see them banging, they need to remind them that it's a rubbing tool and it's for rubbing. Now the very best part, once the print has been created, students peel this off like they're peeling off a fruit roll up and it reveals their print. What you need to teach students is that this is definitely a learning experience about how much ink to put on, how hard to press. So not everyone is going to be perfect. And in your lesson slides, you should have pictures or even I've done this before where I've made posters and clipped it onto my drying rack of what are mistakes that you shouldn't keep because some of our learning we're going to toss and throw away and just count it as learning. Um, the first mistake is ghost. When students do not put on enough ink, we'll tell them to go ahead and throw that one away. Next time they should use a little bit more ink, a little bit more pressure so they avoid those ghost prints. The second mistake that I see is students have crooked prints. So we're using this paper here to line things up, lining up that outer edge with the construction paper and the inner edge with the stamp so that that doesn't happen. Um, it can move on them if students aren't holding things down when they're doing the rubbing. So that's another thing to look out for if students repeatedly are having that error come up. If students use too much ink, it's going to go into the holes of their stamp and their image is not going to print out clearly. When this happens, students do need to stop, wash their stamp in the sink and dry it off. So this is something that takes a lot of time. So I teach this to students ahead of time so they can avoid this mistake because it's the one that takes the longest to fix. Another mistake is getting fingerprints, yucky gooey fingerprints on the outside edges. For prints, you want things to be very clean and have a neat outside edge. When students do get a print that they are proud of, I have them sign it with a pencil and I leave pencils back at this station and then they move their artwork to the drying rack. Something that it's a little hard for students to understand is we're creating a series when we're doing printmaking. This isn't like a painting or a drawing where we make one and then we're done. This is like Pokemon cards. This is like Squishmallows where there is an entire series. So students should be making, in the younger grades, I have them make about five really good ones as their goal that they do end up saving and put on the drying rack. For my printmaking lessons for elementary grades, um, first grade through um, fourth grade, I would just do printmaking in one day. We just have this one printing day. With my fifth and sixth grade students, um, I do some more advanced projects and they may be finishing up their carving or creating of their stamp on that very first day and getting into the process. I also let my upper grades experiment a little bit more with mixing ink. So I do two printing days for my fifth and sixth grade students. For printmaking cleanup, one of the first instructions that I give is to have students throw away all of the foam trays. And then students move all of the rollers that we did use into our sink hot tub. And I show them a picture of this so they know ahead of time 
where that's going to be when we get into the clean up. For my back table, students gather all the rubbing tools together in a bin and they gather any extra papers um, that need to go into the trash that are mess ups and help me to throw those away. Ideally, I can reuse the table covers uh, for my next class, just throwing down some messy mats if there's any particularly wet or gooey spots. But if it is the last class um, that I'd be using those in, students would help me to roll those up like a burrito. So the cleanup is actually quite fast. Um, all the students are working together. I do have some students do a little bit of pre-cleaning if they finish early. So as they would finish printmaking, students that are done early would move to my carpet area or in your classroom, it might be an area on the floor where they could do this and they fill out an exit ticket. Then the first students to finish the exit tickets, I would have them maybe put a few of the rollers into the sink, have them start looking around at sinks. Are we leaving any paper towels and things there that they can clean up before we even begin the large cleanup altogether? If you found this video interesting, be sure to like and subscribe. I make videos just like this one every single week. I help make your job easier, help you improve your classroom management, and help you feel less alone in this crazy career.